All right, welcome back. Today's project is using ink in water. It's a pretty simple project. It can be used with macro lenses or long lenses, and you can see it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So let's get started. Uh, to begin with my camera gear, I'm using an Olympus OMD uh, Mark III. I have a shutter release. I have off-camera flash, and we'll talk about all the settings as we get into shooting. The supplies you see on the table, in addition to the flash, notice the flash is illuminating through the back part of the fish tank. This is just a basic two and a half gallon small fish tank from a local pet store, and I've filled it up with water. Once you fill it with water, you often want to rub the front side of the glass to release any of the air bubbles that sometimes appear. That way it doesn't um, taint your image at all. On the back side of the glass, I do have a piece of white copy paper, and that's going to add to the diffusion of the light as I shoot through the water. Of course, I have a pitcher. I'm using some plastic underneath the fish tank in case I have some random spills. Always keep a towel handy. And then I have several different ink varieties. And these inks are just um, purchased from a local craft store. They are water-based inks, and I found those work quite well. So to get started, what I like to do is do some sample images first. So I'll use just a basic empty syringe, syringe without a needle, and um, just to kind of get some splashes going and to test my lights. So with my camera set up, I have a 60 millimeter macro lens and I am shooting on a tripod. I've already made sure everything is level. And the goal of this project is I like to have just a little bit of the line of water in the frame. That way I can um, estimate and I can calculate focus a little better and I can estimate what's gonna be in the frame of the picture. So I do have my camera set on manual exposure. I shoot at 1 60th of a second and F9 as an aperture. I like to stop down a fair amount so that way I can get as much depth in the frame as possible. So just as a quick sample, I'm gonna make sure the flash triggers. So go ahead and shoot that. And I end up with a fairly white picture. So I need to get a little bit more detail into the frame to see if um, I've got the right amount of light and I wanna set my focus. So this is a steel, all steel ruler. And I can set that into the fish tank and when I drip the ink, I'm gonna drip it close to the front edge of the fish tank. So I'm about a half inch from the edge there. And then I can use the zoom feature on my camera and manually focus until that ruler comes in nice and sharp. I do like to keep it in manual focus because otherwise if you use autofocus every time you shoot another frame, the camera is going to refocus on you. And that's not gonna be helpful. So now that I have focus achieved, just to practice my lighting, I'm gonna use this syringe and I'll just make some splashes like you see here. And trying to splash them at about that same distance that I'll end up putting the ink. So here's where the fun comes. Now I can start adding some ink. So today I've decided to just stick with some red and green inks, which just sounded festive. And they have their own little eyedropper. And like I said before, I'm gonna drip them close to the front edge. And if I tried to use a burst mode, in reality, you think that that might work. However, your flashes often can't keep up with burst mode. And so I prefer to just shoot each individual shot separately and planned. So now I can just add a few more drops of green this time. And then really quick, add a little bit more red in at the same time. So as you add your drops, you can always um, change the 
perspective of the camera too, so I can raise and lower it. Since the tank is so, so deep, if I wanted to get more of the fogginess that appears in the bottom, I could just lower my camera a little bit and completely change the frame as well. So there's all kinds of op options and varieties here. Uh, I imagine you could even stir it up a little bit if you wanted to add a little bit more fogginess to it. Certainly you can mix other colors and I'll show you several samples of this shoot and a few others that I've done. Here are some sample images using red and blue ink and you can see the variety of patterns that are available. And then by changing the height of the camera, including more of that fogginess, you can see what happens there. And then these, I've used a magenta and a blue as well. And some of them incorporating the fogginess at the bottom of the tank and others less so. I love the unique patterns and the fun, interesting shapes that arise from this project.